the uterine artery is the main source of the uterine blood supply. It arises from the anterior division of the internal iliac artery. Then it moves medially towards the uterus, and about 2 cm lateral to the cervix, the uterine artery crosses over the ureter. Then it reaches the uterus at the level of the cervico-uterine junction. Once it reaches this point, the uterine artery divides into two branches. The main branch ascend along the lateral border of the uterus in a highly convoluted pattern. And just before it reaches the fallopian tube, it divides into three terminal branches. The ovarian branch, which anastomose with the terminal branch of the ovarian artery. The tubal branch, it extends through the mesosalvinex and supplies part of the fallopian tube. And the fundal branch, which penetrates the fundal part of the uterus. Another source of uterine blood supply is the ovarian artery. This artery is a direct branch of the aorta. At the ovarian hilum, it divides into small branches that enter the ovary. And finally, it anastomoses with the ovarian branch of the uterine artery. It also sends several branches that supply the fallopian tube and finally anastomose with the tubal branch of the uterine artery. Now again to the main uterine artery. At the cervical uterine junction, it divides into a main ascending branch and a smaller branch that descend to supply the lower cervix and the upper vagina. The vaginal artery is a branch of the internal iliac artery. It supplies the vagina and the anastomose with the descending branch of the uterine artery. Many branches of the uterine artery penetrate the body of the uterus to supply the myometrium and the endometrium. Now I will remove a small part of the uterus to see what happens inside. Now you see the three layers of the uterus, the outer serosal layer, the myometrium, and the endometrium. When branches of the uterine artery penetrate the body of the uterus, they form the arcuate artery. This artery runs in the myometrium just under the serosal surface. Arcuate arteries from both sides anastomose with each other in the midline. They encircle the uterus and looks like an arc, and that's why they are called arcuate arteries. From the arcuate artery, the radial artery will arise at a right angle, extending through the myometrium to reach the endometrium. They are called radial arteries because they look like a radius of a circle, which extends from the periphery towards the center of the circle. At the junction of the myometrium and the endometrium, the radial artery will divide into two branches, the basal artery and the spiral artery. The basal artery is a short, straight artery that supplies the basal part of the endometrium, and it is not responsive to hormonal changes. While the spiral artery is a long, highly convoluted artery, that supplies a functional layer of the endometrium. The spiral artery responds to hormonal changes and they play an important role in menstruation and during pregnancy.